for today's class um, because uh, people, a leader needs um, something to uh, show that you're in English class. Well, that's annoying though, my camera's not working. Ah, dumb. anyway. What a pain. Maybe I can join later on my cam phone and then. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Let me just see if I can. Uh... No. Okay. Okay, now I can exit full. Oh. I can't go. But let me just have a look here then. Classroom 6A. Okay, ID. Zoom. Eight five two one zero. Yeah, okay, fantastic class. Join Pass. Co password is fantastic. I Okay, yeah. Okay, so this me. Where's the other one? Four one eight zero two. Okay, so here I am now on my audio. So, can everybody open the cameras, please? Come on, Josh, stand up and it, Stefan, open your cameras. So, okay. Right, we'll just have a little bit of a smiling competition. So uh, look at the camera and smile. If I see you're not smiling, you're eliminated, okay? I don't, oh, I don't know, just stand there. Okay, smile, hold your smile. Well, not the, I can't see you smiling because I can only see the top of your face, so you're out. Fina, I can't see you anywhere, it's all blank. Oh, there you are, it's too late, you're out. Angie. It's a bit flat. Okay, you're out. Okay, it's just Justin. No, that you're only half your face. I can't see you smiling. You're out. Stefan, you look sad. Okay, you're out. So it's in between um, Vanessa, Emily, and Dustin. Can hold a smile. I think Vanessa's almost. Yeah, it's almost cracked. Okay, so it's Emily or Dustin. Okay, it's a close one. Let me see. Oh, just that's just cracked, so I'll give it to Emily. Okay, well done, Emily. You're the smiling champion. I thought Dustin was going to win that, but anyway, never mind. So uh, I'm talking to you on my handphone, and I've also joined on my uh, laptop. Okay, so it's time to start today's class. Um, so let me share my screen with you. And then um, she she might be the materials. Okay, we're on this page, aren't we? Right now, so we're on um, unit unit eight, page eighty today. A famous landmark is our topic today, and um, you can see here this big rock in Australia. It actually has two names. Do you know what this big rock, we, what do we call it? Maybe you've seen it before somewhere. The do, you know the, do you know the name of it? The Abogoric. Okay, we're going to read about it. It's got actually two names. It's got an English name 
and an Aborigine name. So the English name is called Ayers Rock. I don't know, uh, A-Y-E-R-S. I don't know who Mr. Ayer was. But the Aborigine name is um, Uluru. So for the uh, original inhabitants before the English um, arrived in Australia, kind of took over the place, really. So, um, so it's a famous rock, yeah. It's named Ayers Rock, or some the Aborigines call it the Uluru. Okay, so um, so what do we have to do? We have to um, read uh, this, but there's some missing information. And then we have to match, we have to put these sentences in the four gaps. Okay, A to E. So there's actually five sentences. So one we will not need. Okay, one is um, redundant. It's there just to waste our time. Okay, so let's... Um, Start off uh, reading the first sentence. So, Justin, can you read the first sentence, please? This photo shows a famous landmark in the desert of, of Central Australia. European explorers saw it for the first time in 1873 and named it A.S. Rock. The original inhabitants of this part of Australia the Aborigines call it Uluru. Okay, so um, then what comes next? What's a, what sentence shall we put in there? So they call it Uluru. Um, it could be the rock is huge. Um, okay, from there they organise it. Okay, I'm not sure. We'll... Um, We'll come back to it later, yeah? We'll, maybe we'll just have a look at the answer keys. I'm not sure what it could be, but uh, Vina, can you read um, until the end of the paragraph now? Start here. It is 348 and end of the evening, okay? It is 348 meters high, 3.6 kilometers long and 1.9 kilometers wide. It is beautiful. It is a beautiful red brown color, especially when the sun shines on it early in the morning and in the evening. When tourists okay, come. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Okay, that's enough. So I'm thinking the rock is huge. And maybe that might be the. Um, um, because then it goes on to describe how big it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's very high. And it's very long and it's very wide. So that's 3.6 kilometers wide to walk there. So that's one kilometer, that's two, that's three. And then there's a little bit on the end. So it's quite a walk just to walk around it. And it's very hot there as well. This is like the hotties, the middle of Australia in the desert. It's really, I might get up to like 50 degrees Celsius on some days. Okay, so let's read up until number two. Angie, can you read the next part up until number two, please? When tourists want to visit Uluru, they often start 440 kilometers away in, in a town called Alice Springs. Okay, so uh, that's the uh, nearest town. It's a, it's a small place, but it has an airport. Uh, you can fly out there. And um, so, so then what comes next, you think? From there, they organize a camping trip into the desert, maybe. So they have to, uh, if you're going to go near the rock, you're going to have to camp out. There's no houses, there's no hotels near there. There's nothing really. You just have to camp in the desert. So, um, <clears throat> Yeah, I think the, it's sacred for the Aboriginal people, so that's probably why they haven't allowed any development near there, you know, uh, like hotels or theme parks or anything. So, okay, carry on, Shane. Can you read until the um, end of the, until number three, yeah? <coughs> people on this trip, Shane. 
in the strip, she usually sleep outside under the stars, not in tents, because it's more exciting. A fire keeps away snakes and other animals during the night. And when the sun comes up in the morning, the view of Uluru is amazing. After breakfast, visitors often walk around the base of the rock. Oh, okay, so um, so yeah, okay, so they sleep out under the stars. It's ne probably never rains there hardly ever, so you're not going to get wet. I don't know if uh, you get mosquitoes, but you probably have to wear some protection for that. And then the fire keeps away snakes, which is a, quite a problem in the desert in Australia and other animals. Um, there's a dangerous dog. Uh, called a dingo that can attack people in the night there. Um, it's uh, not really, it's more of a, yeah, it's not really a pet dog. It's not nice dog anyway, and it's a wild dog. Um, so from there, um, so, so what comes next then? So I talked about the walk. So this walk is a 9.4 kilometer long and it takes two hours yeah maybe for some people it might take longer if you're not used to walking i know indonesian people don't really like walking might take you longer <laughs> so um and it's a hot day there's no ankot <laughs> okay there's no object so um yeah 9.4 kilometers so you got 3.6 on one side and 3.6 on the other and then the wide bit as well and then yeah, so it probably adds up to um, um, that yeah, what it what it said there. Okay, um, Emily, can you read up to number four, please? There are caves around the base of the rock, and inside them, you can see paintings. Some of them are thousands of years old. Oh, okay, so they got the paintings that are a thousand years old, um, and then the I think it's this one a the Aborigines use these to teach their children about their history and religious beliefs. So they don't have writing; they just have paintings and stories to tell about their yeah, similar maybe to some Indonesian uh, myths and stories and legends, perhaps about how places were created and so on. So um, then we just got one part to read here. Uh, Vanessa, can you finish it for us, please? By law, it says here. Yeah. By law, Uluru belongs to the Aborigines and they still use it for religious ceremonies. Because of this, they ask visitors not to find it. However, about 100,000 visitors each year ignore this request. Yeah, so um, they, they might, um, I, I don't know why they have that rule, but um, you've got to be careful not to damage the rock as well. Some people might write on it to say they were here, like Martin was here. <laughs> that, and then they put the name like that, whoever they are, they might. So don't ride on in either. In, um, so, um, yeah, it's like that also in uh, Borobudur Temple. It is a um, still a religious place, and some people go there to meditate. And um, I've seen some, like, uh, school children that go to Borobudur, and they're very noisy and a bit wild. Um, and I think, well, maybe they need to be a bit respectful that other people are there for, uh, you know, spiritual reasons or religious reasons, whatever it is. But um, so, yeah, if you do go to a place like this or maybe a cathedral in um, yeah. Europe, yeah, be, some people are there for spiritual religious reasons and not there as tourists. So um, try not to be too loud or noisy or whatever so um let's just see then if i got we got that all right um so we have to put um let's see next the first one then so yeah the paintings are used by the aborigines um 
So from Alice Springs, they organize a camping trip and then the walk takes this long. And then, yeah, the rock is huge and then it says how big it is. So D is the one we didn't need there. So, okay, so now you can read it again by yourself and um, answer um, the questions here, the six questions um, you can answer there, okay? So uh, I'll give you a few minutes to have a look for the answers. Okay, then, so um, let's see. Um, so is it true or false? The Aboriginal name for Uluru um, is as rock. Is that true? Is that true? It's false. Okay. It is 348 metres long. Is that true, Bobby? Uh, it's not long. It's high. It's false. It's 348 metres high. If you want to climb it to the top. Okay, so it's pretty high as well. There's nothing much you can see from the top, just desert, I think. Okay, um, it's easy to visit Uluru from Alice Springs. Is that true? That's true. Well, it's fairly true, yeah, it's not too far away. Uh, visitors to the rock can see caves. Is it true? Uh, yeah, you can see caves inside the rock, yeah. Today, the Aborigines don't use Uluru for ceremonies. Is that true or false? Um, false. False, false yeah. False. Yeah, they still use it for ceremony, some of them, yeah. So, um, the Aborigines do not like people climbing on the rock. Yeah, true. True, yeah. So, um, I, I heard they see it as the heart of Australia, the physical heart of Australia, this rock. So um, it's quite sacred to them. OK, so we've got some more um, um, amazing places around the world. Um, we've got here Victoria Falls. So do you know which continent Victoria Falls is in? One of the world, I think the world's biggest uh, waterfall. Yeah. Any idea? Europe. You, got, you got, well, you got kind of seven continents. You got Europe, you got Asia, you got Africa, you got Oceania, and you got North America and South America. Um, have I missed Europe. something? Else? And then you got um, Antarctica. America. America. It's, um, this is America. This is Africa. It's, in, it's on the border of Zimbabwe and Zambia. But it's named after Queen Victoria, who was a, a queen in England a long time ago. Um, okay, and she never went there. But they got named after her. She never went anywhere, actually. Just stayed at home. Okay, um, so uh, you've got the Grand Canyon here. Do you know which continent that's on? America. Yeah, America. It's, in, uh, it's in a uh, kind of... California, isn't it? Um, That's in California, I know. America, yeah, it's a huge um, canyon. It's supposed to be one of the most amazing places in the world to see. I remember seeing it on Toy Story, one of those Toy Story movies. Um, okay, Mount Huangshan, where's that? 
China. 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 Yeah. So I think um, you study Mandarin. Do you know what Wang means? No. Yeah. Mean? Wang. I think it means yellow. And Shan. Do you know what Shan means? Come on, you do you pay attention in Mandarin class? Okay, Shan means mountain, okay? So it's yellow mountain. It doesn't even look yellow. Fang Shan, yeah. It doesn't even look yellow. Yeah, and then the symbol for Shan is like, it's like down and up and down and up again, free anyway. I remember that symbol. I used to teach in China, so I learned Mandarin, you know? So, um, okay, so now we're going to listen to these people uh, talking about um, their activities. So um, you have to match these three places to their activities. Okay, so let me play this. Lesson 8C, exercises five and six. Speaker one, Zoe. Last September, I went to the Victoria Falls with my husband. What an amazing place! The falls are part of the Zambezi River and they're between the two African countries of Zambia and Zimbabwe. We stayed in a hotel in Zambia. From our room at... No, sorry, I need to click this one. Sorry, first. Lesson 8C, exercises 5 and 6. Speaker 1. Zoe. Last September, I went to the Victoria Falls with my husband. What an amazing place! The falls are part of the Zambezi River and they're between the two African countries of Zambia and Zimbabwe. We stayed in a hotel in Zambia. From our room at the hotel, we could see the Zambezi River. We went fishing there a couple of times. We also went swimming in part of the river that's only a few metres from the top of the waterfall. I know it sounds dangerous, but in fact it's safe. Well, it's quite safe. Anyway, it was a great holiday. Speaker 2, Mark. I travelled across North America last summer with two friends. We visited Canada and the USA. It was a 10-week trip and it was amazing. My favourite place was probably the Grand Canyon in Arizona. It's huge and there's a river at the bottom. You can go canoeing in the river, but we didn't do that. We went mountain biking at the top. It was a great way to see the scenery. We were there for a whole day so we had lots of time to explore. The weather was really hot though, too hot. Speaker 3, Joe. My wife and I were in China last year. It was a six week holiday. About halfway through, I went on a two day trip to Huangshan to do some bird watching. My wife hates bird watching, so she didn't come with me. She stayed in Shanghai for those two days. Huangshan is a really famous mountain. About 15 million tourists visit it every year. It's an amazing place to go walking and explore the beautiful valleys. When I went, I stayed the night at a small hotel. The next morning, I looked out of the window and saw the top of the mountain above the clouds. It was spectacular, really beautiful. OK, so in Victoria Falls, you can go fishing, uh, swimming, a lot of water. <laughs> and what's the, is that? It's two things. Grand Canyon, you can go canoeing, there's little rivers at the bottom of the mountain and mountain biking. In um, Mount Huangshan, you can go bird watching and walking, yeah. So uh, 
you can't really go snowboarding in any of those places. So, um, okay, so, um, and then we have to answer if it's true or false for these ones. Uh, okay, oh, yeah. so um, let me just, uh, do I need to play it again, you think, or can you already answer? I'll play it again. Okay. Lesson 8C, uh, exercises 5 and 6. Speaker 1, Zoe. Last September, I went to the Victoria Falls with my husband. What an amazing place! The falls are part of the Zambezi River and they're between the two African countries of Zambia and Zimbabwe. We stayed in a hotel in Zambia. From our room at the hotel, we could see the Zambezi River. We went fishing there a couple of times. We also went swimming in part of the river that's only a few metres from the top of the waterfall. I know it sounds dangerous, but in fact it's safe. Well, it's quite safe. Anyway, it was a great holiday. Speaker 2, Mark. I travelled across North America last summer with two friends. We visited Canada and the USA. It was a ten-week trip and it was amazing. My favourite place was probably the Grand Canyon in Arizona. It's huge and there's a river at the bottom. You can go canoeing in the river, but we didn't do that. We went mountain biking at the top. It was a great way to see the scenery. We were there for a whole day, so we had lots of time to explore. The weather was really hot though, too hot. Speaker 3 Joe My wife and I were in China last year. It was a six-week holiday. About halfway through, I went on a two-day trip to Huangshan to do some bird watching. My wife hates bird watching, so she didn't come with me. She stayed in Shanghai for those two days. Huangshan is a really famous mountain. About 15 million tourists visit it every year. It's an amazing place to go walking and explore the beautiful valleys. When I went, I stayed the night at a small hotel. The next morning, I looked out of the window and saw the top of the mountain above the clouds. It was spectacular, really beautiful. OK, so, so we visited the falls with her husband. Is that true or false? Um, true. Um, yeah, Zoe and her husband stayed in a hotel in Zambia. Is that true? True. True, yeah. And Mark went on holiday with his family. Was true or false? True. Uh, false. false. He went with two false. friends. False. Yeah. False. Uh, an adventure holiday, yeah. Mark went canoeing in the river. False. Uh, false. He went mountain biking at the top instead. OK. Uh, Joe visited the mountain with his wife. False. Yeah, she wanted to go shopping, didn't she, or something. And Joe loves seeing the mountain early in the morning. Yeah. Uh, true. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, just like if you go to Bromo, you've got to see the sunrise in the morning. That's the best, to get the best view. Okay, so. Okay, we're just about done, but. Um, yeah, can you think of any fate? Well, I've mentioned Bromo. Are there any other famous uh, places to visit in Indonesia? Can you think of any other place? Danautoba. Yeah, Danautoba. Yeah, that's one of the. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, not far from here. You got Gunung Pancha. But yeah, probably there are there's some nice waterfalls around. Bogor, but nothing quite like Victoria Falls, which is absolutely spectacular. Okay, so um, okay, so uh, I'll talk again about famous landmarks tomorrow. Okay, so uh, you can go take a break now, and I'll let Amazing in.
Okay, bye for now, uh, brilliant people. Bye for now. Yeah, bye bye, Justin. Good morning, Mr. Martin. Yeah, good morning, Andrew. Yeah, my camera's not working, so I'm on two devices today. Good morning, Mr. Martin. Yeah, good morning, um, Claire. Good morning, Vina. Oh, Vina, you're still here. Yeah, you can go now. Okay. Oh, okay, there's a cello. Just a couple more minutes, a few more people to join. Two, three, four, five, so I'm missing. Um, is Aaron, has he recovered? Now, Alex as well, isn't there? Is Evan and Alex not yet here? Is Aaron still sick? Is yes. anybody? He's still sick, is he? Okay, everybody, can you open your camera now? And um, we're ready to start. So yeah, come on, everybody, yeah. open your, yeah, your camera. And... Um, Come on, it's only yeah, yeah, I was up on his camera here. Come on, everybody. It's not fair. Evan, Claire, come on, open your cameras. We're gonna have a smiling competition. Jacqueline. Who else is here? Evan, can you not open your camera? Oh yeah, you can now. Claire, can you not open your camera? What's the problem, Claire? Maybe Claire is in the bathroom. Oh, she didn't say, did she? Oh, well, anyway, oh, well, we'll have, maybe have the smile, smiling competition later when she comes back. Anyway, so uh, today we're going to look at um, famous landmarks. So we're on um, this page 80 in the class book today. And uh, we've got a, a picture at the top. Perhaps Andrew knows what this is because he used to live in Australia. Is their uh, famous iconic landmark? Uh, do you know what this is called? What's the name of this this rock? It's actually a rock. It's not a map considered a mountain. It's one big rock. What is it? What's its name? Does anybody know the name of this place? Do you know Andrew? Do you remember uh, the name of this place? You forgot. Ah, uh, I haven't seen it. Oh yeah, well it's not near Sydney. This is right in the middle of nowhere in Australia, yeah. miles from anywhere. So um, I doubt if you 
went there, not everybody bothers to go there because you have to get a plane to the middle of nowhere. But yeah, the name of it is, um, the English name is Ayers Rock, but the local Aborigines, the original inhabitants call it the uh, Uluru. Okay, that's the other name. Okay, so um, yeah, there's uh, nothing there. No hotels, no restaurants, just a big rock. But people still like to go there. I don't know if they have souvenir shops. Maybe in Alice Springs they do. But so let's read about it. And then we have to uh, put in, we've got five sentences here that are missing. So uh, we have to um, insert them into the four missing spaces. And one of them is redundant. Not, uh, we don't need it. Okay, I don't know why they bother putting it there if we don't need it. Anyway, so uh, let's read up to number one. So, uh, Jacqueline, can you read up to number one, please? This photo shows a famous landmark in the desert of Central Australia. European explorers saw it for the first time in 1873 and named it Ayers Rock. The original inhabitants of this part of Australia, the yeah. Aborigines, the Aborigines call it Uluru. Uluru. We call it Uluru, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the name. So, uh, so what is the missing sentence for number one, you think? Any ideas so far? Oh, it's a difficult one to choose. Is it A, the Aborigines uses to teach their children? Does that make sense? Or from there, they organise a camping trip or this walk? But the Aborigines have their own stories about Uluru, or the rock is huge. Has anybody got any guess? Okay, nobody's sure. So we'll, it might get a better mm -hmm. idea if we read the second sent, the second part of the paragraph. So, uh, Deo, can you read uh, until the end of the paragraph, please? There are caves around the base of the rock and inside them. You can see paintings. Some of them are thousands of years old. By law, Uluru belongs to the Aborigine. Aborigine no, uh, no, no, you, you got to read from it is 348 meters, Dale. You're reading the wrong part. 348 meters high, 3.6 kilometers long, and 1.9 kilometers wide. It is a beautiful red brown color especially when the sun shines on it early in the morning and in the evening. Okay. Swim, okay, stop, 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 stop. It's a new paragraph, wait a minute. Okay, so does anybody now have an idea what the sentence might be for number one? The missing sentence? E, maybe? Yeah, that makes sense because it then goes on to say how big it is or how huge it is. So it's how many kilometers wide? 3.6 kilometers, so you can imagine that's one kilometer, and that's two, and that's three, and that's 0.6 there, maybe like that. So it's very wide and quite tall as well. Uh, so um, you probably would only understand if you really went there. Hard to realize from the photograph. Okay, um, next one then. Uh, Cello, can you read up to number two, please, Cello? It's a beautiful red brown color, especially. No, no, no. What were you? Hold on. Uh, when tourists, we read that already, Cello. Pay attention. When tourists, up to number two. When tourists want to visit Uluru, they often start for 440 kilometers away in a town called Alice Spring. Oh, okay. So um, this town is. All it's a small town in right in the middle of Australia. No, not many people want to live there because it's so hot. 
There's no C for miles. So um, what? So what comes? What's we've already had E, so it's not E. So what sentence do you think comes next? Any ideas what comes next? Be, yeah, from, from there, from Alice Springs, that's there. They organize a camping trip into the desert. So you can see here, there's no hotels. You just have to camp. Camping's not for you. Don't go to Alice Springs. And I think it's for my wife. She seems to like luxury hotels, not camping, but I don't know about. Yeah, anyway, camping's good fun. And it's, um, I recommend it though. And it probably, uh, let's see, read more then. Um, Evan, can you read um, from people um, all the way up to uh, number three? People on these trips usually sleep outside under the stars, not in tents, because it's more exciting. A fire keeps away snakes and other animals during the night. And when the sun comes up in the morning, the view of Uluru is amazing. After breakfast, visitors often walk around the base of the rock. Okay, so what sentence comes next then? So it's not B and E, we've already had that one. Any ideas? It gets easier. I've only got three to choose from now. C? Yeah, this walk is 9.4 kilometers long and takes two hours. So um, I think some people, um, I'm sorry, Indonesian people don't really like walking, so it might take them a little bit longer than um, other people perhaps um, but yeah this walk take uh, it's 9.4 walk all the way around the rock I don't know why you would do that but anyway there's something to do I suppose um, and then um, maybe you wouldn't would you want like to walk all the way around that rock in a hot day in the hot weather or would you just take a photo and a selfie and then <laughs> I don't know what you would so, uh, so yeah, it's beautiful to sleep at night under the stars. You will see the stars so much more clearly there because there are no street lighting or anything like that. So the stars will jump out at you. It's probably the best place in the world to see stars almost. And uh, yeah, and then um, you don't have to worry about the snakes because of fire. It's, that. And then other animals, I don't know, um, kangaroos maybe, or there's a dog called a dingo that's a bit dangerous. Um, it's not, you can't really have it as a pet because it's quite dangerous. Okay, so let's read up. Uh, Alex, can you read up to number four, please, Alex? Is your microphone working? Alex, can you unmute? Read yes. Up, yeah, read up to number four. Start there with there. Are, yeah. There are caves around the base of the rock and inside them. You can see paintings. You can see paintings. Some of them are thousands of years old. Oh, okay. Some of them are thousands of years old. So what comes next then? What's the, what's the last missing sentence? It's either A or D. Which one do you think it is? A. Uh, yeah, the Aborigines use these uh, paintings yeah, to teach their children about their history. So they didn't really write down in words their history. They just wrote, drew pictures on this rock. So uh, it's important that they preserve those paintings. It's their history. So, uh, OK, so we can finish off with um, the last part. Claire, can you read from by law right to the very end? By law, Uluru belongs to the Aborigines and they still use it today for religious ceremonies. 
Because of this, they ask visitors not to climb it. However, about 100,000 visitors each year ignored their, this request. Yeah, so they're a bit naughty to do that, I suppose, but um, they want to climb and maybe you see the view. We can't really see anything much from the top. It's more desert, I suppose. So, um, so yeah, a lot of tourist places are actually uh, also uh, religious kind of um, places, you know, they have some kind of uh, meaning. So not everybody goes there to be a tourist. So, for example, like in Baba Badur, it's a Buddhist temple. So some people go there to meditate and to uh, have a spiritual experience or something. Uh, so they don't go there just to take photos and buy souvenirs. So um, when I went to Boro Bador, I remember seeing some people like meditating, but then there was a whole busload of school children and they all were just noisy and jumping around and all over the place. So they kind of disturbed it for the people who were there or to be quiet and meditate or whatever. And um, yeah, the same goes in, uh, like in, you go and visit a cathedral in Europe. Um, some people go there actually for uh, religious reasons to pray. They're not there to be a tourist. So you have to be a bit careful yeah, not to be too noisy and respectful when you go to some of these places. <coughs> so um, we now um, have, um, oh yeah, there's some questions there to answer. So let's see if we can answer these uh, six questions. It's just true or false. I'll give you a few minutes to have a look for the answers. And then um, we'll see if you not, you can. Uh... So is it true the Aborigines name for Uluru is Ayers Rock? No. It's false. The Aborigines name for Uluru is Uluru. Yes. Is it true that the uh, Uluru is 348 meters long? No, it's 348 meters high. Sure, yeah. Now, is it easy to visit Uluru from Alice Springs? Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah well, it's it's fairly easy. Yeah, you, you still might have to get in a jeep or something or a car. Probably Ooh. can't walk, but yeah. Visitors to the rock can see true. caves. True. Uh, true, yeah. And then maybe there are paintings inside those caves. Today, the Aborigines don't use Uluru for ceremonies. Is that true? Oh, is that false? False. It's false. They still use it for some kind of ceremonies, whatever they do. And then the Aborigines do not like people climbing on the rock. Is that true? Yeah. Uh, or false? It's true, yeah. It's true. So uh, if you ever go there, well, Andrew was in Australia, but he didn't go there. And I went on holiday to Australia, but I, I never went there because it's so far away. It's a big continent, Australia, really. But uh, and perhaps if I went to Australia again, I would like to go there. But anyway, there we go. I don't know if you want to go there, but you might want to go to one of these places here. So you got um, Victoria Falls here. You know which continent Victoria Falls is in? Is it in uh, Europe, Asia, Africa, Australasia, North America or South America, or Antarctica? Which one is it? Do you know where that is? No, we don't know. 
Okay, I'll tell you then. It's in uh, Africa, near Zambia and Zimbabwe. Not Wakanda, okay? It's not that place, but Zambia and Zimbabwe. And um, it's named after Queen Victoria, uh, who uh, never went there. She never went to there, but she was a queen of England and they named the state of Victoria after her as well in Australia, I think. She didn't go anywhere, she stayed at home. She's got a place like that named after her. And then um, this place, the Grand Canyon, which continent is the Grand Canyon in? Europe, Africa, Asia, Australasia, North America, or South America, or Antarctica. Does anybody know? The Grand Canyon? Oh, come on, folks. You must know where this is. Okay, I'll have to tell you then, won't I? It's in um, North America in the USA, near the California. Yeah, it's one of the great uh, sites see in the world, I suppose. Now, this one might be easy for you to tell me which continent. Where is, yeah, Asia in China, isn't it? Mount Guangshan. Do you know what Guangshan means? Come on, and what does Huang mean in Chinese? Does anybody know what Huang means? We don't know, do you know? Do you not pay attention in Mandarin class? It means it's yellow. Like There's nothing like Huang. Huang means yellow, okay? And what does Shan mean? I don't know. You don't know what Shan means? How do you manage to pass your Mandarin test? It's okay. about food and stuff. Shan means mountain, okay? So it means yellow mountain. It's also a river in China called Yellow River. I forgot the, the name for river in Mandarin. But anyway, okay, so. Um, so these people uh, go visit it there. So we have to say which activities they do in which place. Okay. And then listen again, and you have to answer the true or false ones. Okay. So let me play the first one and then write the activity next to the place. Okay. Ready? Go. Lesson 8C, exercises 5 and 6. Speaker 1. Zoe. Last September, I went to the Victoria Falls with my husband. What an amazing place! The falls are part of the Zambezi River and they're between the two African countries of Zambia and Zimbabwe. We stayed in a hotel in Zambia. From our room at the hotel, we could see the Zambezi River. We went fishing there a couple of times. We also went swimming in part of the river that's only a few metres from the top of the waterfall. I know it sounds dangerous, but in fact it's safe. Well, it's quite safe. Anyway, it was a great holiday. Speaker 2, Mark. I travelled across North America last summer with two friends. We visited Canada and the USA. It was a 10-week trip and it was amazing. My favourite place was probably the Grand Canyon in Arizona. It's huge and there's a river at the bottom. You can go canoeing in the river, but we didn't do that. We went mountain biking at the top. It was a great way to see the scenery. We were there for a whole day, so we had lots of time to explore. The weather was really hot, though. Too hot. Speaker 3. Joe. My wife and I were in China last year. It was a six-week holiday. About halfway through, I went on a two-day trip to Huangshan to do some bird watching. My wife hates bird watching. <coughs> so she didn't come with me. 
She stayed in Shanghai for those two days. Huangshan is a really famous mountain. About 15 million tourists visit it every year. It's an amazing place to go walking, and explore the beautiful valleys. When I went, I stayed the night at a small hotel. The next morning, I looked out of the window, and saw the top of the mountain above the clouds. It was spectacular, really beautiful. Okay, so we got the Victoria Falls.、Uh, what can you do in the Victoria Falls? There's lots of water there. That's a clue. What can you do there? Which activity? Did you hear? It was too fast, Mister. Oh, what did he say? Fishing. Fishing and one other water activity. Where we go, we use water. Swimming, yeah, you can swim in a waterfall, but maybe be careful not right under where the water comes down. There might be too much pressure. But how about in the? And I think there might be crocodiles down there as well. I'm not sure if it's a good idea to go swimming there. Anyway,、um, the Grand Canyon. What can you do in the Grand Canyon? Canoeing. Canoeing, yeah. There's little rivers at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, and what else can you do? Did you hear? Oh, right, I'll tell you. You can go、uh, mountain biking,、uh, which you thought you might be able to do in the mountain, but that's not one of the activities that they did there. So, what can you do in Mount Wangshan? Probably pronounced it wrong. Wang Shan. Okay, bird watching. Yeah, there's a lot of、uh, interesting birds up there. Wild birds. And one more. Simple activity. That only you only need two feet to do it.、You've、got two feet, then you can go walking. Yeah. Okay, so、um, that's what they did there. So.、Um, I don't know if I should play it again. I'll play it one more time, then you can answer the true or false. Lesson eight C, exercises five and six. Speaker one, Zoe. Last September, I went to the Victoria Falls with my husband. What an amazing place! The falls are part of the Zambezi River. And they're between the two African countries of Zambia and Zimbabwe. We stayed in a hotel in Zambia. From our room at the hotel, we could see the Zambezi River. We went fishing there a couple of times. We also went swimming in part of the river that's only a few meters from the top of the waterfall. I know it sounds dangerous, but in fact, it's safe. Well, it's quite safe. Anyway, it was a great holiday. Speaker two, Mark. I travelled across North America last summer with two friends. We visited Canada and the USA. It was a ten-week trip, and it was amazing. My favourite place was probably the Grand Canyon in Arizona. It's huge. And there's a river at the bottom. You can go canoeing in the river, but we didn't do that. We went mountain biking at the top. It was a great way to see the scenery. We were there for a whole day, so we had lots of time to explore. The weather was really hot, though, too hot. Okay, so, so speaker three,、oh, some Joe. Speaker three. My wife and I were in China last year. It was a six-week holiday. About halfway through, I went on a two-day trip to Huangshan to do some bird watching. My wife hates bird watching, so she didn't come with me. She stayed in Shanghai for those two days. Huangshan is a really famous mountain. 
About 15 million tourists visit it every year. It's an amazing place to go walking and explore the beautiful valleys. When I went, I stayed the night at a small hotel. The next morning, I looked out of the window and saw the top of the mountain above the clouds. It was spectacular, really beautiful. OK, so we go back to Zoe. She uh, visited the forest with her husband. Was true. OK, and Zoe and her husband stayed in a hotel in Zambia. It's also true. Um, how about Mark? Did he go on holiday with his family? False. False. No, he went with his friends, yeah. And Mark went canoeing in the river. Was that true? Did you get that one? It was false. He went mountain biking at the top. And then Joe visited the mountain with his wife. Did his wife go with him to visit the mountain? No. No, she went with him to China, but she wasn't interested in the mountain. I think she wanted to go shopping. OK, so Joe loves seeing the mountain early in the morning. Is that true? Um, yes, it was true. So he was lucky enough to get a good view. Sometimes when you go in the morning, there's not, you can't see anything. It's too misty and you might be unlucky like that. But he was lucky and he got a really nice view with the sunrise. Oh, OK, so um, we'll talk again about um, landmarks in Indonesia tomorrow. OK, in um, um, class. So um, I'll see you again all tomorrow. Um, and um, I'll let in again, amazing people. OK, so uh, brilliant people. Are you combined for your next class or what? Are you all combined? No. No, OK no. then. So uh, if you're amazing, you can go have a break, okay. can't you? Yeah. Okay, thank and then, you. Uh, no. Brilliant. Come back in again. OK, bye. Bye for now.
Okay, Pat Dino's now here. So he's now the host. Okay, Pat Dino. Um, I better go to my other class. I'm already late. Okay, bye.